we'll be moving on to our second keynote address, uh, which will be talking on designed for disruption. So please put your virtual hands together as I welcome Mr. Rahul Wilde, EVP Digital Transformation and Digital Business Unilever. Mr. Wilde has been with Unilever for 30 years, started in India at HUL and moved across various roles in Singapore. Currently, he's based in the UK in the global Unilever headquarters. He has expertise and leadership in digital, in media, and in transformation. He has been speaker at many international events and even at Harvard Business School. And we are delighted to have uh, him here on uh, eTech Munch. So a very warm welcome to you, Mr. Rahul Velde. And Mike and join us on screen. Very warm welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Kathy. Thanks for uh, the warm introduction and uh, thanks for having me uh, on this platform. It's a pleasure to speak with you. And uh, uh, I think it's a very broad theme, right? Designed for disruption. And pretty much uh, this is one of those themes in which we can talk about several uh, different subjects. Uh, the way I thought of uh, sharing with you some insights and perspectives was along three anchors. What's happening in the consumer world and what's the impact of uh, that uh, disruption on businesses uh, as a what's happening in the channels world and uh, really how the channels are getting disrupted whether the communication channels whether they're commerce channels or indeed any other form of uh, uh, dialogue and lastly the impact of all of this into what i call as the commercials um, and we look at all of this from the lens of uh, technology and the way to sort of uh, frame it for me is quite simple that uh, technology has been on an acceleration curve for the last several years. Uh, and it is in the last two, three years that uh, specifically after the pandemic that it's had a virtual takeoff on many different aspects. So I think the first and most uh, profound impact on consumers lives, uh, it's fair to say that in the last few years has been uh, really technology. And what it's done to consumers lives is just amazing. Uh, in balance, it's uh, been uh, fantastic uh, progress. As a consequence of both uh, the technology uh, change, uh, you know, the change in the entire ecosystem, the landscape, what has happened is that consumers are spoiled for choice. Now, this has always remained true. Perhaps you could argue that it was true that consumers were demanding five years back, 10 years back, and uh, sequentially, it's always been the demanding consumer. But what technology has enabled uh, through a multitude of different uh, interventions is to really be able to uh, service and cater to almost hyper-segmented needs. So we talked of segmentation in the previous world, but today, if you really think about it, you know, whether it's the um, concept of a high level of personalization or expectations of consumers, they go all in the space of hyper-segmentation or a great deal of segmentation. Uh, connected with this idea of segmentation is also that uh, we see more and more that the consumer world keeps getting polarized and getting stretched between uh, different sort of uh, vectors. And as it happens, uh, then, uh, you know, to be able to service and to serve the needs of consumers, which have varying needs, uh, in, uh, often very, very diverse, uh, is a big opportunity as well as a challenge. And lastly, I think the interface and the uh, interaction which the consumer landscape has had with uh, technology uh, and with channels. And when we think of channels, really, let's, um, uh, you know, if you were to button it down, it's really down to two fundamental things. The way consumers are interacting and spending their time on media, and very broadly, the way consumers are engaging with commerce and transactions. And if you look at what's happening in the entire space of uh, a disruption when it comes to channels of communication, channels of dialogue, uh, no doubt that uh, those have transformed very dramatically in the last few years and indeed continue to transform even now as we go forward. Uh, I think uh, many, many, very often we think of uh, disruption as something which happens an event and which completely changes uh, things. And uh, the way it's actually been working out is what I consider as more transformational, uh, which is it's going fast along a particular line uh, and occasionally there are some very disruptive forces which come into play, but really speaking, it's technology which is uh, transforming the way we communicate, the way we consume content. Uh, more specifically, if you think of the entire landscape of uh, the amount of time that is now spent on social media, and if you really think of mass media, the shift uh, which is taking place to uh, OTT or over the top of uh, platforms, uh, uh, for sure, uh, you know, one of the biggest impacts on consumers' lives has been this area of uh, 
uh, communication and area of uh, content consumption. And as a consequence of which all of us are consuming uh, by and large much more content uh, than we've ever had. Uh, much more is available to all of us and therefore uh, for, from a business standpoint, from a marketing standpoint, uh, to be able to actually tap into that vast reservoir of content, uh, bringing it to life, uh, producing uh, great stuff in a creative manner uh, is again a very important uh, challenge and an opportunity. And the second point about channels is about uh, the channels of transaction. And I'm going to loosely call it channels of transaction because it's not only about e-commerce or commerce as we know it in the consumer good space, but it is transactions and commerce everywhere. So the channels through which we were engaging with consumers uh, and uh, having the transactions has changed very, very dramatically. The most obvious one is, of course, e-commerce. And as uh, it is popularly said that what happened in the last uh, 10 years in e-commerce pretty much happened in a period of 10 weeks during the pandemic. And every across pretty much all the countries, we've seen uh, that uh, e-commerce has been accelerating very fast. But it's not only about e-commerce in the consumer good sense or in the apparel sense or in the physical good sense. It's also commerce and transactions in the digital sense of whether it is digital banking and fintech, uh, whether it is educational technology or any other form uh, of uh, a transaction interface has been disrupted in a very, very significant way uh, by technology. This event itself is a great example, actually. It's almost uh, the pandemic disrupted uh, the wonderful event that uh, uh, the group used to have uh, uh, live and where a few hundred people would attend and suddenly when you take it on the virtual platform like this, it has now moved on to several uh, few thousand people, uh, two, three times more than what would have attended the physical event and in a very different way across geographies without the need to travel. So the channels of exchange of value, whether it is a commercial transaction where people are buying goods or services, or whether they're consuming content, either paid or unpaid, whichever way you look at it is very, very big impact. And there isn't actually any industry which we could say has not been impacted uh, positively uh, or in a different way uh, because of this entire transformation that's taking place in the channel landscape. Now, both the combination of what's happening in the consumer landscape, the channel ecosystem has huge implications for all businesses on the commercials. And the entire commercial model of all businesses in many ways is actually therefore undergoing a change. Uh, in most cases, if not all, technology is enabling similar things to happen at a much cheaper cost. Uh, uh, you know, so definitely a cost uh, and the value equation is changing in the favor where technology is impacting uh, costs in a favorable way. And whether it is, uh, when we talk of disruption, uh, what's important is for us to recognize that this is not only in the marketing landscape as we popularly talk about it or in uh, the communication landscape, that disruption is there in supply chain, is in research and development, it's in HR, in the way we manage employees. Just as an example, if we think of what's happening with the gig economy and the emergence of a number of platforms, whether it is Uber, whether it is Ola, whether it is Swiggy, whether it's Zomato, a large number of people have now been employed in the gig economy, uh, as it's popularly called, thanks to technology and the interventions that uh, technology uh, has uh, actually been able to make in what otherwise was a very different ecosystem. So if you sort of were to uh, take a step back and look at this picture, you really have uh, on one side consumer and the consumer world is being disrupted uh, uh, pretty much every day. Uh, the channel landscape is uh, changing very dramatically, whether it is transactions and commerce or whether it is uh, consumption of media. And then you've got the entire commercial model, whether it is the cost, whether it is the finances, the margins, the price you pay, uh, changing very, very dramatically. I mean, just to illustrate sort of this point on the commercials, you look at the commercial model of uh, free content, uh, which is consumed by a large number of people, a platform like YouTube on one hand, and you look at a subscription-led platform like Netflix on the other, and both of these not only coexisting, but both of these growing very dramatically. And their revenues, uh, you know, their entire time that people are spending on these platforms is going very, very high. And think about them conceptually. These are fundamentally very different commercial models, both in, think of the top line, YouTube generating large parts of it through advertising and Netflix generating uh, almost entirely uh, through the area of subscriptions. And the cost models are being very different. So these three things really mean that businesses have an imperative to understand all these dimensions uh, very well. Uh, and then to be able to create uh, responsive uh, uh, systems, responsive changes 
uh, which is what very loosely we could call it about is uh, design for uh, disruption. Uh, and in the designing of uh, the new systems, we have to continually think of uh, what is it uh, that we can do to actually serve the consumers and customers better? Uh, by all means, you know, that has to be the number one uh, sort of uh, uh, objective where consumer centricity or customer centricity is absolutely uh, the number one sort of thing to think about. And there, uh, therefore, uh, to creatively service uh, customers, to creatively serve their needs, uh, to make sure that we create brilliant products and services which serve them become very important. Uh, data and information plays a very important role in uh, this kind of uh, designing the new business uh, systems, uh, simply because there is a vast trove of uh, data which is available to all of us now uh, to actually leverage and to make sure that we find uh, pretty much that one uh, great idea which we can actually uh, help to uh, serve the underserved. Yeah, what is important is that uh, you know, data is uh, uh, definitely something that is a science. And to that extent, it is a core capability that all organizations have to start building or, or indeed have started building over the last few years. Uh, and we, if we were to project in the future, whether it is a number of jobs, a number of people who do analytics, uh, data, and, you know, in those spaces is going to be dramatically higher than what it is today. Uh, so if you were to think of a superpower which companies need to have and you know if any company were to be asked uh, what is the new superpower or the superpower that they envisage for sure uh, you know data and the entire space of data is a superpower which has is super critical uh, to have in the context of uh, designing for disruption the second part which relates to uh, the idea of communication channels uh, content channels or indeed commerce channels is uh, the space of uh, creativity and uh, especially as it relates to content, uh, creativity has uh, to be absolutely put right at the uh, front and center of uh, the thinking. Uh, one of the ways big shifts are taking place in the world is from uh, the one to many kind of communication that used to be there. There'll be brilliant news channels or brilliant entertainment channels uh, producing great content, whether it was movies or shows and then uh, showing it to the large world. And shifting that to what you can call as a participation economy, where people uh, are increasingly uh, producing vast troves of content and therefore being able to actually surface them up, uh, whether it is through platforms like uh, Instagram or platforms like TikTok or indeed many of the user generated sort of content, which is becoming way, way more popular. And we live in a world where there is a paradox almost, where on one hand, we have these brilliant uh, uh, commercials, uh, shows, and movies which are made with high-definition cameras. We watch it on a big screen or a big theater. And on the other hand, consume uh, hours and hours of content on a mobile phone, which is short form, which is quickly, which is pretty much been done actually shot on a mobile phone, perhaps, and becomes very popular. So creativity and managing this in the context of the pop culture, managing this paradox, making sure that we are actually able to creatively surface, uh, break the clutter becomes very important. And much, much the same way designing for the new channels of commerce, for the new channels of transactions uh, is absolutely a new skill and uh, that has to be developed by all organizations. So if you think of it in the context of education, for example, there's a big difference between a live lecture and a recorded lecture or a, a virtual uh, sort of a lecture. If you think of it in the context of uh, uh, fashion apparel, uh, it has a completely different meaning because now a lot of commerce is actually uh, generated through, you know, whether you call it a virtual try-on or uh, different interfaces, very different from, you know, the uh, sort of changing rooms or uh, trial rooms that would be there in physical stores. So how do you get this idea of everything that used to have physically, which provided value to consumers, but bring them into the technology and the virtual world and leverage it for the new channels of commerce across sectors? I mean, the obvious one is, of course, e-commerce. Uh, where we all now order goods from whether it's Flipkart or Amazon or whatever the platform is. Very, very dramatic change. And then for business leaders, uh, but I, when I say leaders over here, I don't necessarily mean only people who are at the top of the organization, but through the organization, one of the biggest things that one has to address is how do we actually address the value chain dynamics so that the value exchange and costs are... Uh, uh, managed in a fashion where they still drive growth, they still drive profitable growth, uh, 
uh, and fundamentally we start looking at aspects of uh, the line on, on the pnl uh, to see how they uh, uh, deliver uh, great value there was a, a nugget i picked up in the conversation previously which was around this idea of uh, performance and making sure that the performance is great uh, being able to measure it <laughs> i think there was a mention of vanity metrics and how uh, the metrics of performance are changing very dramatically and because there is a high level of measurability and data science that can be applied to pretty much actually across the lines of the pnl uh, it becomes really important uh, to think of the value exchange and what cost value equations work uh, through the entire pnl so when we think of uh, this idea of designing for disruption the very obvious one uh, to look at is uh, uh, across these three dimensions but more specifically for a lot of conversation certainly the previous panel talked a lot about uh, aspects related to marketing i think one of the big changes that's taking place is the impact of technology on marketing uh, whether it is creativity and how content is created whether it is how that creative content is distributed whether it is then uh, the distribution of that content what effect and what results it gives uh, to the business all these aspects are now impacted by marketing technology in a very big way which was initially uh, incidentally the uh, a topic which is very close to i'm sure a large number of people in the audience and there you know we have thousands of options today pretty much if you think of the luma scape of uh, what is the ecosystem if somebody were to ask it is almost impossible to answer that question and define because any diagram that you draw has hundreds of boxes and uh, arrows and circles Uh, and therefore an extremely complex system and therefore uh, what becomes important is that in order to sort of uh, consider this complexity of the changing consumer landscape the changing channel landscape uh, the uh, dramatically changing commercial dimensions is to really put a uh, science uh, behind uh, all of this in terms of the evaluation and bringing in new skills uh, new ways of working new ways of thinking uh, into the business Uh, so look in in summary really and i'm conscious that uh, the previous session and overall we uh, running out of time and there could be potentially a number of questions which the audience may have but i wanted to summarize it by really saying that if we were to think of designing for disruption uh, there are many lenses uh, to look at it from uh, what is important over here is uh, uh, again managing a paradox where on one hand uh in order to design for disruption and because the change in the world is so fast uh, all of us have to be extremely agile nimble fast fleet footed goes without saying that uh, you know we have to be absolutely on top of the game by being fast but even as we are being fast uh, we have to manage the paradox of also being thoughtful also being uh, taking planning and understanding and applying the science to a very different level both at looking at sort of not just where the puck is but where the puck is going what's the view of the future and how do we design actually for that future that we envisage and therefore sort of being able to make the short sprints uh, in direction of you know that long term journey most businesses we know today uh, certainly th we, you know we always think of speed as uh, absolutely the new currency i think it applies to just about every business on the planet uh, and equally uh, you know doing it in a manner which is planned thoughtful Uh, and uh, resting on the fundamentals of evidence and science becomes very important in all of this uh, if i were to sort of uh, put a circle around it is the culture that we build in companies uh, culture that the organizations have uh, and there are many dimensions of culture which are stand out uh, uh, certainly innovation creativity we talked about a few of those themes but one of the most important aspects which is coming to life uh, in the last few years and will perhaps gain more and more prominence as we go ahead is what is summed up by many great leaders as a learning culture and the ability of both the individual uh, the organization to learn uh, and to continuously therefore iterate out of that learning and improve to be able to continuously pivot by far is the most sort of important aspect of culture which uh, we are seeing in all uh, new age uh, great organizations and uh, promoting that learning culture uh, in the context of technology in the context of disruption uh, is uh, absolutely uh, the number one sort of a dimension uh, by the way uh, you know again uh, there is no such thing as there needs to be only one aspect about culture that is prominent but if i were to think about what's happening really right now in the last few years because of technology and disruption and what is likely 
to play an important role in the future. I think this aspect of learning uh, continuously uh, and bringing the learning culture would be very important. So to summarize really, uh, there are multiple dimensions of disruption that are taking place, whether it is consumers, whether it is channels or the business models. And uh, in order to uh, ensure that we are able to actually be on top of this game and design and run businesses uh, in the ch change them, transform them in this sort of world, which is uh, changing very dramatically all the time, uh, it becomes important to apply the culture and the talent dimension, more specifically, uh, start sort of uh, building a learning culture within an organization, learning both uh, from experiences, but learning from data uh, and ensuring therefore that uh, each of those elements are more responsive to changing customer and consumer needs. So, uh, Kathy, in summary, really, therefore, uh, that's uh, what I wanted to share uh, uh, with the audience. I'd be very happy if there are any questions or uh, any other discussion points uh, that I want to amplify. Uh, earlier, I was speaking with Priyanka and I said, look, you know, I want to make sure that there is a dialogue rather than just me uh, doing the keynote because, uh, you know, as I speak, there will be things which come up. And I'm therefore, I'm curious actually to learn through the questions as well and what's on your mind, what's on the audience mind and what people have to ask or say. Yeah? So back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr.